William Jackson calls me the N-word in front of my mother. That's right. I creep under the shadow, the foggy is mist, and leap up into battle. The plot is intense. I leave a nigga rattled, it's hostile and tense. So please don't be baffled at how I mob up in this. Now I present masculine as he when y'all see him. A man, but don't confuse me with Paul either. They call themselves MGTOW, and I know what you're gonna say, but it's a simple fact that you're not going your own way. You go with traffic on the road built by the state. A libertarian with Uncle Sam's license plate. You're not carving a new path, you walk on a track. Line. You go with the green light and stop at the red sign. Rugged individual is what they claim as they seize. Spaghetti arm, soft skin, gamer gate dweeb. Internet neocon, 4chan troll. Delete and block on the spot is where your spam goes. Y'all can't straw man of your dishonest shows. But we'll troll your fight back by making comments close. Black Petty Jack, I do it straight out of spite. Cause I like to see you whine about how they're taking our rights. SJWs delete what I speak. Political correctness is keeping us weak. They want to take my fun and my freedom of speech. Ain't nobody trying to hurt your little legion of geeks. We got issues to cover. Black bodies in the street. Native women missing, getting slaughtered as we speak. We we'll start shooting cops from their faces to feet. We have more by the numbers. Let them taste the defeat. Socialize the justice and make it complete. Quantify the type of liberation I seek. Economic and environment, the silent release of the quieted majority that tried to compete. But the system is rigged up by the elite. Took the veggies off the plate, now there's hatred and beef. Took the steady job and pay, sent it straight overseas. Now we're left with the stress that we'll take to the street. Chained up, beat down, choked and poisoned They would love for us to muzzle up and hold the noise in But fuck that, we'll knock a hole in the fence Burn the corporation down and chop the owner to bits Stop the production, cause disruption Convince the consumer it's a flawed consumption Poking holes in the culture would be hard to stand To stop making garbage upon demand Supply side on a global scale, the holy grail Of logical economics was supposed to fail But I just digress from the bottom to bliss let me get back under the shadows of the foggiest mist. Now I'm black, y'all, and I'm black, y'all, and I quickly hit him with this roughness. Wine cellar podcast coming at y'all last, and we sick of socialized justice. Now I'm black, y'all, and I'm black, y'all, and I quickly hit him with this roughness. Wine cellar podcast coming at y'all last, and we sick of socialized justice. If you're more of a reader than a listener, you can peep our written content at socialdissonance.wordpress.com. For their cancellation of a school visit from New York Times best-selling kids author, Jerry Craft. Now, roughly 400 parents signed a, cha a change.org petition calling for the cancellation of his appearance at the school because they claim the books teach critical race theory. Kraft's new book centers around being one of the only students of color in a privileged white school. As a result, the district has also pulled Kraft's books from the library while they're under review. Our panel tackles that issue tonight. And our guests are here on the Factor on Censored tonight to talk about what's going on in Katie ISD with this author, Jerry Kraft. And Rashonda, you're familiar with uh, Mr. Kraft. Is this the new 2021 version of book burning and burning the author at the stake for the school district kicking him to the curb? It is. It's, and, and it's so sad because this really isn't warranted. It's it, it's just another um, way for them to try and bring critical race theory into the discussion. Jerry is a phenomenal author. He has um, middle school fans all across the world. And the bad part about this story is that he's writing stories that really happened to his own son. And so his own son had issues at new schools. And that's what he's writing. And KDISD parents are taking that and just running with it to bolster their claims of critical race theory. Todd, let's hear from you in this conversation. When we hear about critical race theory and how many white parents across the country are against it, uh, upset about it, and they essentially go after anyone who brings it close to their children in the classroom, your thoughts about this and Jerry Kraft and his books? And they need to realize that critical race theory usually is a law school course and it's an elective or it's a graduate school course and it's an elective. So your first grade student, your kindergarten student, your fifth grade student, even your 12th grade student probably won't 
have to deal with this. And we have to also realize that only about 444 parents brought a complaint. I think I read somewhere that Katie has 80,000 students and a lot of those parents are upset about this decision. So there is a light at the end of the tunnel, but people have to realize that children come into this world with a blank slate. And often when you see racist adults, it's because adults put that in their head as a child. So if we can get to them younger and teach them about the difference between people, black, white, rich, poor, we might be able to make a difference in the next generation. But too many people, when they hear about race, I think it's a case of hit dogs hollow. If they feel, if you feel guilty about talking about racism, it's usually because it hit close to home. There's black bigots and there's bigots of all races. But when a black bigot does something, I don't feel guilty because I didn't do that. And I don't feel that way. So it's a case of hit dogs hollow. When you hear a lot of parents complaining about it, I think they have racism in their heart. Kevin Fulton, your opinion on what we're seeing at KDISD as a conservative African-American. Well, you know, I haven't read the books. Uh, it looks like the reviews are, it, it doesn't go too far into, you know, CRT. So I don't have any opinion on specific books, but I do understand that parents are concerned. And what it looks like that Katie did was allow for parents to voice opinions. They pull the books, review them, and then make a decision on whether or not to put them out. I, I'd like to see parents involved in the schools and deciding what their kids are reading. But you really can't blame parents. There has been so much indoctrination now in schools, and they've become a social experiment. Uh, teachers experimenting class and, and filling our kids' heads with so much garbage that the test scores are down when it comes to reading and writing because we're in there trying to make our kids into, you know, some social experiment. So I understand why parents are concerned or understand why they don't trust the school districts. And they have the right to have the book at least reviewed by a panel to decide whether or not it's something that they want to be introduced into the schools. And just, just to remind everyone, nobody had this problem when they pulled Dr. Seuss uh, books. Nobody had this problem when they pulled Huck Finn books. But once you go down this road of starting to pull books uh, based on what we're scared of our kids reading, this is the result of that. This so isn't the first time. Uh, just uh, interrupting them real quick to say they weren't screaming critical race theory over Dr. Seuss. I, I shouldn't use the word screaming. They were typing just like everyone else. They were typing cancel culture. All right. Critical race theory is just the same. Uh, it's a way of saying they're being reverse racist, mm -hmm. just as cancel culture is a way of saying political correctness. I'm trying not to... Um, uh, use the colloquialism screaming that's disingenuous and I don't want to appropriate that from them. Yeah, this isn't the... Yeah. Oh, he brought up like test scores. He's like, this is why kids test scores are low because you're trying to fill up all their head with this nonsense. But the test scores, like the testing that they do with standard, um, standardized tests isn't have like anything to do with critical thinking anyway. So it's like, hold on there for a second there. doesn't want to pick your microphone up. All right, picking my microphone up. Do your microphone again. Um, testing, one, two, one, two. What's going on? All right, let me get that playing and look at your microphone. First time KDISD has pulled the book. They pulled The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas for the same reason, because it dealt with racism and police brutality. These parents, an isolated group of parents, because I know a lot of parents at KDISD who want their children to read it. First of all, they, they don't want it reviewed. They want it pulled. They want their kids to be taught this rosy picture of both the past and the present. And they want their kids to grow up oblivious to anything that doesn't fit nicely into their narrative. All right, Todd, you have the last 30 seconds here. My brother says it's a social experiment, but I think education has always been a social experiment to shield us from reality. Like you, uh, Shonda said, they want to tell people that we, we had this rosy, America and America's never had any problems. America has always had problems and a lot of stuff that we learn in class in school is nonsense. So we need to teach the kids the truth. Maybe we can make a difference with this next generation if we stop sugarcoating what actually happened in American history. All right. We want to thank you all for joining us here on The Factor Uncensored, talking about this interesting subject and see what happens with parents. And if we hear from the other parents, the majority of parents, in that school district, as we know, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the oil, and that's what happened so far in KDISD. All right, let's check your microphone again. I'm checking one, two, one, two. Yep, do it again. Checking again. Okay, now you're coming up. Okay. I just need to turn it up. All right, 
Getting that microphone in order. We have not used that third microphone in several weeks. All right. So the episode title alone, that is um, indeed <laughs> what uh, a, a comment that was left on the uh, Facebook Live by, wait a second, I know that profile picture, but Facebook name has changed ah, to a shortened version of the Facebook name. This may be for privacy reasons, so I will not say the individual's name, but pointing out the title of the episode alone, indeed being um, that free speech absolutists are unsurprisingly silent on white supremacists fighting to ban books. Mm -hmm. And if you've listened to the wine cellar in recent times, mm -hmm. when I think about free speech absolutists, I keep kind of pointing to one particular person because that that's the loudest person that I probably have some audience crossover with. Not a lot. This person's followed by almost a million. But I just went back to check to make sure that I wasn't ill and and um, and I went to Kyle Kalinsky's page and I see that. um, OK, he's talking about the view. All right. CNN and MSNBC flipping on corporate Democrats. He's talking about that. He's talking about Biden's thugged out response to uh, cinema getting followed in the bathroom. So Kyle Kalinsky's talking about thugged out issues, I see. Um, all right, he's talking populist shit as usual. Uh, Missouri executes a man with a child's IQ. Um, talking about Chris Hannity. Biden threatens nuclear option. Threatens, right? Um, yeah, so at the moment, I'm not really seeing where the Kalinsky man is covering uh, this story. There may be another free speech absolutist covering it. But right now, you see, um, as these conservatives, these white supremacist conservatives are trying to ban that book that a black person wrote about their own black son just dealing with racism in school, you see, Kyle Polinsky has bigger things to cover. The free speech absolutist left has real issues to deal with. All right. Title of this one is what up, man? See, the thing is, is that it takes a lot of energy to fight for free speech. And so he can't fight every battle. He only has to fight the super important ones. Yes, I also do all my fighting in a uh, in a suit jacket. That's so, just that's fighting clothes. John Wick does it. Wait, I thought we liked Kyle Kalinske. Uh, he does, uh, he does um, uh, good populist coverage, but then they get to that free speech absolutist shit. And what bugs me there is um, that they only pop up for it when Alex Jones gets banned mm -hmm. or when some right winger, some racist, some white supremacist gets banned from a platform for violating the platform's rules. Right. And then they're like, well, they're going to come for all of us. I'd like to point out that it's 2021. Kalinsky has had his YouTube page since 2008. Um, I also, like all these, uh, you know, the left wing free speech absolutists, I don't think I've ever heard any of them actually cover um, anything that's been going on with the sex workers' rights stuff and sex workers being deplatformed. Oh, well, sex. Well, Kyle Kalinsky, he is in favor of sex workers' rights. Mm -hmm. He wants legalization and regulation. So he's not. No, he is. It's an unpopular opinion. It's very unpopular. Because it's a bad opinion. Solution that's worse than the... Dethrone them and debunk them. And it's uh, what he's talking about here uh, while he's missing this story about actual people trying to violate speech is uh, CNN says uh, censor Facebook and false posts should be held accountable. He's talking about a uh, clip where Don Lemon presented an idea and he is going to argue voraciously. They want the same thing with Facebook because you know what? On Facebook, it really is right wing central at this point. Why? Because a lot more boomers use it. So you do have like Ben Shapiro and the Daily Wire. They're oftentimes at the top of the ranking. Do I like that? No. But what's the answer to that? Fucking work harder and dethrone them and debunk them and get more popular and try to overcome them in a fair this algorithm play field. Did just say beat them they in don't the do that. market of ideas? They want to just jump Hold the up. line. I'm hey, up. there's I'm a lot of up. stuff here we don't like. Yes, okay, you start. Hey, you, you, you jumped it. You, you jumped it on me. Oh, sorry. Yes. I said, did this nigga just say defeat them in the marketplace of ideas? Yes, that has always worked with conservatives. Haven't you seen how that's been working since 1980? I would have, I would have had that clip pulled up if I would have known that's what he was gonna say. What clip? The one with the comedian where he was making fun of them, and he's like, "Fine, defeat them in Narnia, in Mordor, the marketplace of ideas." 
<laughs> you know, like it's not yeah. a real thing. That's also a thing. Yeah, who came up with that shit? The marketplace of ideas, like that language alone. Rich people who intensely debate theoretical things for fun because they don't have to live with the real world consequences. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea of the origin of that. So put us on top. Facebook has a million problems. What we shouldn't do is come up with a whole new set of problems and propose a solution that's worse than the current situation. And that's what they want. More censorship, more deplatforming, more, uh, less of a meritocracy algorithm and just redirect us to the front of the line like they did on YouTube. I ah, you see less of a meritocracy algorithm because you know, Facebook had a meritocracy algorithm. Mm -hmm. Now as someone who actually covered net neutrality when leftists gave a shit about that, <laughs> apparently that doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, um, Ajit Pai, who the fuck is that? Yeah, uh, Facebook openly straight up said, um, uh, they will uh, like, as far as the algorithms go, they're gonna favor Facebook pages that buy um, uh, the what is it, sponsored mm -hmm. posts. Yeah, to that if you buy a sponsored post, you all you not only get that, but in the algorithms, you will also be favored now. Mm -hmm. They're already doing that. Mm -hmm. Ah, you know, but hey, he's cool, Linsky. He's cool, Linsky. cool Linsky. That's how it's spelled. K U L Linsky. So no. how about you stop hating on cool Kyle? It's you know, like if, you say, cool J. if you say cool Kyle in his last name, hmm. that could be three. Nah, no, it wouldn't. <laughs> I, I, can't really, I can't really put that joke on him. I could for who he argues for. Definitely. Do it on Twitter, do it on Facebook, do it wherever. Um, and it's a, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. And you want to like find them for misinformation? Wait, how is Facebook supposed to be responsible for you know Aunt Bernice in Tampa Bay, Florida, who thinks that Fauci is is a, a demon pedophile? Like, what do you you want to find them because somebody else is an asshole? You have to think about these social media platforms the way you think of like a phone company. Now you call your drug. You all right. Yep. These are like phone companies. Mm -hmm. Facebook is just like the it's like dial up. I dial into Facebook pretty regularly myself. What's actually killing me though is uh, how he's complaining about how it's not fair to find Facebook or the social media platform for what's put on it. Do we remember what SESTA FOSTA was about? It was about penalizing places where sex workers were advertising. And instead of penalizing sex workers or people buying services, punishing the places on social media that let them advertise. How bizarre we have been fighting over this for years in terms of sex workers' rights, but now suddenly it's a problem when it comes to Facebook pages. Dealer on the phone and you want to get some weed or some shit, should AT&T be fined because of that call? You're allowing illegal activity to happen. Yes. I'm just gonna say yes. If it was fine for sex workers, it's, if it was fine, then it's fine now. Same energy, Kyle, same energy. Or you have a conversation where you're saying politically incorrect things. Should uh, AT&T be fined for that? Or should you be kicked off of the platform and not allowed to make phone calls anymore? No, everybody looks at a phone, uh, the phone service providers like they're just a medium. They're, they don't do curation or filtering. That'd be stupid. Uh, Phoenix Polito said a jeep pie earlier in the segment. I did. Um, when Barry Hussein uh, put a jeep pie in place on the uh, FCC, Federal Communication Commission. Mm, I think so. Yeah, it, when, uh, when Barry Hussein, uh, Barack Obama, uh, <laughs> put a jeep pie there, a jeep pie had come from, was it was it Verizon or AT&T? It's been a while since I covered Ooh, this. I don't know, right? let me find out. Right, lefty memories are fading. Mm. Old lefties, we can't do it anymore. Need so new many young things blood. Have, so many things have <laughs> happened since a jeep pie. Right, scam likely calls coming in. It's iPhone love, baby. And uh, fucking, he came in doing that shit for them because they were like, uh, they were picking which applications they would favor. And they were arguing for um, like subscription base internet like instead of you just get all the applications on your smartphone say you have verizon or you have at&t then you can get the um the plan that has facebook youtube 
and let's see what else like wordpress mm -hmm. and you can get wordpress websites and they want you to have a group like that or you can get a group where you have twitter vimeo and let's say uh what, what, what's the what's that other one uh maybe whatever sites host gator is hosting right right like it would it would split up what websites you can get so that everyone no longer gets the full internet mm -hmm. which i mean to me it really seemed just like tv packages right yeah 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 they want package deals that's the language yeah you found something. Uh, yeah, so he went from Harvard to the Department of Justice to the Senate Judiciary Committee Committee to Verizon to the FCC. That's our that's our that's our revolving door that Obama was going to cl close that revolving door. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. And then put in a turnstile. Mm -hmm. We want turnstiles, not revolving doors. Also, a fun fact: he was confirmed unanimously by the Senate in 2012. Good bipartisan effort, I see. Yep. Well, it also, but uh, according to Snopes, you cannot lay that on one particular party. Mm -hmm. All right. You can't say Democrats voted for that if they weren't the majority. Mm -hmm. According to Snopes, the website that's full of truth and where you go to fact check everything. <laughs> Roy, Roy. All right. But you know, I'm trying to tell you now. All right. So, so cool kid Kyle. All right. Hey, 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 I didn't hey, say it. You said it. Hey. There's also he, he he's still on it. This is September 29th. Vocal about it. Then when they were on their deathbed, they were like, "Oops, I should have gotten the vaccine." You don't want to be that person, so get vaccinated. Now, having said all that, um, this policy from YouTube is a terrible idea. Uh oh, what what's terrible about this idea? Okay. Now, the the title of this video for him is breaking youtube bans all vaccine misinformation which actually they didn't one thing they don't get is that people just use code language like the folks that have been doing vaccine misinfo for years mm -hmm. they know how to just not say that word and right. not put it in their titles tariq right. nasheed's been doing it zaza ali's been doing it i have no more examples because those are the only two vaccine misinformation people i follow for the purpose of doing this job. The right wingers are doing it too. Okay, I haven't been following yeah. their ass. Yeah, I've seen them in like the prepper groups and stuff. Yeah, like they'll, yeah. um, they like deliberately try to misspell it in some mm -hmm. way or some Yeah, shit. misspell it or come up with another name for it. Yeah. Or, um, yeah. Yeah, they say, they, they'll just say, you know, that thing. That's what you're doing. Oh, um, someone, uh, someone, uh, it looks like a knock knock joke, but knock knock is actually for inoculation. That's one of them that they've been doing. So yeah, I've seen that. That was a weird one. But yeah, I saw that one in there too. So yeah. Whack. What's the limiting principle? What's the limiting principle? So you say, okay, COVID-19 vaccine, vaccine misinformation is dangerous. People might die as a result of it. Uh, Got to ban all talk of, um, you know, being anti-vaxxer for the COVID vaccine. Got to ban all talk of being anti-vaccine with these other vaccines. If you're going to do that, uh -oh. Then, of course, the next logical step, and it's not even uh oh, the next logical step. So if we get rid of vac va vaccine misinformation, mm -hmm. which is causing not just anti-vaxxers to die, but everyone they force themselves upon. Right. Which and I am using that language on purpose. I'm using the language of rape culture on purpose. I'm aware that I'm doing it. I'm a propagandist. This is what I do. I think the, it is, though. Everyone that they're forcing themselves on are dying, too. And but Kyle Kalinsky is worried about what? Hold up. Really a step. It's just got to ban all vaccine misinformation or excuse me, not vaccine misinformation, all health misinformation. See the ba bad idea. Oh, he's about to raise an eyebrow on you niggas. I don't know if y'all saw that. Watch the eyebrow go up because he he's making a good point. People do that uh -huh. when they're about to win the debate. Uh -huh. oh, oh, shit. Watch that eyebrow work. I mean, I'm a big screener for this one. God damn it. Or excuse me, not back to misinformation, all health misinformation, all health misinformation. Ooh. So, um, see now, Phoenix the leader, that that would be bad, right? To ban all health mis misinformation. Yeah, God forbid I never have to see another whack ass post about how women need to go uh, starve themselves to stop having periods because menstruation is unnatural. God forbid I should be stopped from seeing that again. Yeah, what is it? You, you, you or the, uh, <laughs> oh God, what was the one that uh, women don't actually uh, need pain medication during childbirth? They're just like faking it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, what's, I, <laughs> what's the one that uh, so some nigga said? Um, he hates when his girlfriend has her period. Why can't she just hold it in like pee? Ye 
God forbid I should be stopped from seeing these posts and people tweeting and posting these things as if they were saying something uh, like factually accurate that we should, you know, keep, we should definitely keep uh, pushing these myths for the next generation. See, now, yeah. see, you're, see, you're not, you're not cool like Kyle. Did. In fact, oh, that's great. Oh, I, I just don't know what I would do if I stopped seeing the ones about how you can take a diabetes medicine for your dog. Yeah, you can take like animal insulin if you if you're trying to save money. That seems fucking safe, doesn't it? Mm, I'm not gonna ver that mechanism. Forget just vaccines, various medicines for various diseases. So in other words, by this logic, literally all of the field of alternative medicine should be prohibited from existing, and you shouldn't be able to discuss it on YouTube. Now, that's not the same thing, though. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. He's a white man and he said it is. <laughs> Look at how breakable his nose is. That means he's whiter than other white men. That is a breakable ass nose. It is. That's, a, that's a Eastern European shit. Jesus, you can sneeze <laughs> on that nigga and snap his shit. <laughs> but also then nigga- like, but even like the way he said that is kind of fucked up though, honestly, to say like alternative health or whatever, because even that is a huge range in and of itself, because it's one thing to say, um, you know, uh, if you're having trouble sleeping, maybe you should try some like catnip and chamomile tea. That's alternative health. But so are the fucking anti-vaxxers. Like technically speaking, that is why we need to have these distinctions. What the fuck? Okay, but he has a sharp haircut and clearly got his eyebrows threaded. So he's in the game. He knows what he's talking about. It's not that sharp, the haircut. (laughs) (laughs) ...from existing, and you shouldn't be able to discuss it on YouTube. Now, I'm a big opponent of alternative medicine. The reason it's alternative is because it's not medicine medicine. It didn't make the cut. There's not enough evidence for it. For it to work so i'm against alternative medicine but would i ban all talk of alternative medicine of course not see the idea here is well they have a big problem with the fact that these are privately owned platforms mm-hmm. like they just get to do that get the fuck over it or argue more against capitalism and letting these giant fucking platforms exist like that. Yeah. See them coming. How about the next time the next big social media thing comes into play, you immediately argue against it being huge and privately owned. Instantly. Start out like that. Soon as TikTok started, another one will come up. Facebook is trying reels, but there is no new thing that's not owned by a mega thing. But when it comes up, mm-hmm. it will. I've been around long enough to know that new stuff will happen. So, Ar- you know, make that he, he just needs to make that that argument in the, in the marketplace of ideas. Yeah. Which is down the street somewhere, I guess. It's in a plaza. It's right next door to Narnia. It's, it's next to a Red Robin and an <laughs> Outback Steakhouse, I think, by a super target. You can get sent to pine cones. So it's like by a, like a highway? A uh, highway, yeah. Well, then that's uh, over a uh, poor black neighborhood from the 1940s. Mm. Well, it needs to be proven, and the official authorities need to say this is the right path in order for it to be accepted. I got news for you guys: the world is a complex place. It's not black and white. There's massive gray area. Look, look, folks. The white man is trying to tell you that the world is complex because you didn't know that already. <laughs> no one knew that. All right. I I love the idea. And, and, you know, funny thing is, like, at this point, like, when I say, like, oh, they're just they're pretending to talk to people that aren't in the audience. He actually is because I am a detractor and he is saying that shit to me and I still don't buy it, Kyle. Mm -hmm. Bad ideas. Oh, so you don't like his marketplace of ideas. I've never been to it. (laughs) No one takes me to the marketplace of ideas. (laughs) And I'm down to go check out a new store. They might have a, a, a good clearance aisle hmm. where they probably have David Pakman's ideas. Let me go over here and check the uh, Facebook comment section. I'll tell you what. Uh, um, that, 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 that is, as soon as I go to the Facebook comment section, I immediately see um, I love scented pine cones. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Zach Lopo. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Jay Loco said, why is he um, defending Facebook? 
he is uh he is making bad i don't even want to say bad faith arguments he actually believes what he's saying yeah probably so he's just making bad arguments yeah and that and i just, actually unsubscribed i actually have to go to his page to see what he's doing now yeah because i think um like a lot of people like him have so much privilege that but they because they are like leftists or have leftist ideals they think that like um they really are going to be next to like with these media crackdowns but because they're also so detached from other more marginalized leftist communities they don't know how many leftists were deplatformed as the testing ground before the alex joneses were and so it just comes across like really like condescending and annoying and just detached from reality yeah and it is it is he's from class privilege in new york at that yeah so who knows how the fuck much his parents were making mm -hmm. shit he probably comes from damn near millionaires yeah because it's like because you know imagine someone like kyle kolinsky i could imagine someone like this being at a dinner party with you know his peers but like i can't imagine that you know or a jimmy Dore, a kyle kolinsky anyone like that that they're you know following like some black homeless trans sex worker with like 150 followers so like they don't even know that these people were getting the platform because they don't even like mingle with the commoners anymore no nope. you know nope he hangs with crystal ball in them now and crystal ball isn't exactly working class folk crystal mm. ball already came from class privilege in virginia had enough class privilege to be able to afford to run for office and lose while partying. Mm -hmm. And then from running for office and losing while partying, had a gig at MSNBC, to my understanding, from 2012 to um, she actually got fired over endorsing Sanders and critiquing Clinton. Mm -hmm. So I think to about 2016, getting an MSNBC salary, yeah. plus whatever you get from books and speeches and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Kyle, he, he's kind of hobnobbing with the big dogs, as it were. Yeah. All right. So back to this. Um, over here on WineCellarMedia.com, we have, we have the uh, the article over from Katie Magazine, <clears throat> where um, an author, uh, Jerry Craft Talk, uh, Jerry Craft had a talk and it got canceled. Um, so many of the Katie third graders, I do it all these school names, mm. after remember, right, the Katie, they were looking forward to meeting with the author and illustrator, Jerry Craft via Zoom, and the meeting was canceled after a group of parents raised concerns, mm -hmm. went on Republican rants over the books referencing critical race theory, which they don't. Right. That's just what they call everything now. Mm -hmm. And um, Mr. Kraft is already a winner of the two. I have so much heartburn. I'm always pausing. Kraft is 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 already the winner of the 2020 Newbery Medal, uh, the uh, Coretta Scott King Author Award, and the Kirkus. I don't know who the fuck they are. The Kirkus is that Kirkus or Kirkus? I don't know. The Kirkus Prize for his graphic novel is that. Is that just the way of saying comic book? Yeah. Okay, so for his comic book, New Kid, and the sequel, Class Act. And um, so a a Katie mom, remember Katie is the name of the school, not a person's name. Uh, Katie mom, who goes by the name of Bonnie Anderson, received the flyer from her twin third grader school, um, like many of the parents did. And she said, well, I review all of their instructional material, whether it's a math worksheet or something like this. Now, she said instructional material. Mm -hmm. This is a book that children can choose to read or not. But see, I also wonder if she's calling it instructional material on purpose as like a dog whistle, because remember, schools are where your children are sent to be indoctrinated. Yep. So everything is an instruction manual. Yeah, they're forcing them to not pray. <laughs> Uh, so she claims this is instructional material because she's a bad faith actor. Every single Republican is a bad faith actor, except for David Duke. All the rest of them are very bad faith actors. <laughs> David Duke is quite honest. He kept it pretty, again, like, I've never heard someone say the word Jews so many times before I heard a David Duke interview, God damn, on Alex Jones. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> And so she says that she uh, she views these items. 
All right. And she also previously ran for the ISD board of trustee position. So this is this is actually a person that you would call a Karen, yep. a class like privileged it. busybody that <laughs> just wants to fuck with people and perpetuate white supremacy. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, and da, 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 da. Uh, she also read Jerry Kraft's books. She claims to have read Jerry Kraft's books and grew concerned over how racism was presented in them and believes they push critical a a critical race theory curriculum again books that you can choose to read or not read she's calling instructional material and calling a curriculum and calling them critical race theory See, I, and i wish that um like reporters would push back on that like make them define how this is critical race theory curriculum right like you have to pull the page the paragraph right. explain it and explain and don't just tell me what the paragraph is or what the sentence is or whatever explain how it is critical race theory curriculum because this is exactly like how uh, conservatives are where you say like communism, like, oh, communism, it's oppression, it's blood, it's this, it's that. But how does it work? They can never tell you how it works. They can never tell you um, what the definition is, right? The same thing with like socialism, but they'll tell you it's bad. They know it when they see it, but they can't define it. Yeah. And like, I want that type of pushback on this because, you know, as everyone should know by now, critical race theory is a um it, it's a college level uh theory and particularly usually at a secondary level people getting master's degrees and phds are the ones taking critical race classes and it was designed to um, address like systemic um racism and prejudice in the world this isn't about uh like this very hyper individual story of one black child having a bad day at school because someone was racist or something like that this is about actual structures like the prison system and the court system so like break it down tell me how this is critical race theory curriculum i'm dying to know this is why i wish the left would be more willing to act in bad faith right like when bernie sanders was running you should have called everything anyone said about him anti-semitism should have just said it just act in bad faith right when um uh uh, did, did we have any um Uh, any hardcore, well, uh, Nina Turner. Mm -hmm. Anything anyone says about Nina Turner is racist and misogyny and misogynoir, Mm -hmm. right? Like, just give up on arguing class because you're arguing class against classist people. When you say this is going to hurt poor people, they say, yeah, that's the idea. Mm -hmm. So start being (laughs) bad faith actors. Actually, what they say is, but not all poor people. Uh, the one time they not all poor people. <laughs> not, not all. Yes, all poor people deal with your shit. And <laughs> fucking um, uh, like what on, on this one? Wait, where was that? Yeah, act in bad faith. Right, so like do some shit like this. Go to these right wingers. Find find some book that you think perpetuates white supremacy that you don't like, and the whole oh, yeah. textbook the bible the bible because jesus it's per- per- portraying jesus as white and that is bringing critical race theory into here by making jesus be a race when jesus is for everyone because all lives matter right there that is why i'm so <laughs> fucking is <laughs> maybe something less well known <laughs> right but maybe some book that's written by um jr bumblefuck from galveston texas mm-hmm. right and he wrote a book just come on just oh my like, god can we get harry potter banned for being critical race theory yeah make a bullshit spin just do it They're oh not no gonna the, read it the spin is already there what is it that um the kids are born wizards but usually their parents are wizards. So it's like a line of wizards, but one of the girls who goes to school, her parents are human, but she was born a wizard and people make fun of her because she's not a real wizard. It's the, it's an allegory yeah. to race mixing. No, or what I would put, I would be like, yeah. So essentially, I mean, you all, all you folks know about JK Rowling, feminist JK Rowling. <laughs> All yes. right, critical race feminist J.K. Rowling, yeah. who pretends to be against transgender people. All right, but that's kind of what wizard is code for. And for those of us that actually know the Bible and then read J.K. Rowling, I mean, for those of us that know the Bible, maybe some of you out in this crowd don't know the Bible, but for those of you that do, 
All right, mm -hmm. let's not be mean to those in the crowd that don't, all right? Let them catch up. Each one reach things. one, each one teach one. That's right, all right? So for those of us that know the Bible, then read J.K. Rowling, we know that wizard is code for black. I mean, if you go to any of these black SJW's pages, what do they talk about when they critique film? The magical Negro. Oh, J.K. Rowling, okay? All right, you can look this up right now, Christians. Take a moment for Jesus and look this up. <laughs> Take them, but this is not willy nilly nonsense. Oh my God. All right. And so wizards are code for black people. And then what you said, the human child. Yeah. Which the human race, which frankly. Oh, in this case, the wizards would be white and the, oh, the no. humans would be black. Oh no, not, not, for, not for this disingenuous artful, <laughs> artful smear, no? as Hillary would call it. <laughs> this, <laughs> and right, and you said that human child got bullied by the yeah. wizards? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so J.K. Rowling is making fun of black wizards bullying white human children. We need to ban this fucking critical race theory anti-white book by this fake anti-transgender activist. Thank you, fellow Christians. And those of you that don't already know, you will catch up and we will pray for you. Just act in bad faith, act it back. If we get the result we want, who gives a fuck how we got there anymore? I mean, that is a compelling argument. <laughs> Jesus. Because we are losing handily. Yeah, because one thing I know, like, because like how I say, I, I deliberately join like these right wing groups, these misogynist groups. Mm -hmm. And one piece of language that I'm learning on the internet that I'm sure everyone else already knows and Slow William just caught up is how they use the term based. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, like they don't like Tariq Nasheed because he says white supremacy exists, mm -hmm. but Tariq Nasheed hates transgender people. So the white supremacist that's also transphobic will say Tariq Nasheed is based because mm -hmm. he doesn't care how you get to the conclusion of harming trans people. He just wants to get there. Yep. All right. We want shit like UBIs. We want, you know, like good workers' rights legislation. Then let's get based. Jesus Christ. All right, winecellarmedia.com, the base rock of podcasts. Oh, no. All right, you hit this crack, you'll keep fucking coming back. It's 2021, nobody freebasing anymore. Sure. Because, all right, let's 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 talk about my old job That's again. That's not. No, that, no. Oh, you don't want to talk about that. So I used to work for a company called Hearthside. And um, when I transferred out here in Michigan, they were like, yeah, this one. Um, so do you want to sign the union papers? I was like, holy shit, they got a fucking union. I'm on board. Let's join the union. I meet the union representative. who's a crackhead like now. But somehow to my what I'm guessing here is that this is a crackhead from like the late 80s, early 90s mm -hmm. that just found a dose that works for them because mm -hmm. this person functions. She's 62 years old this year. She's Six. micro dosing crack. Yeah, maybe That's crazy. It's 2021 and she's still rocking it. And she's the union rep. <laughs> I bet her, like the person that um, sells it to her is like, how is she still like, how is she still okay? At this point, she probably knows how to make it herself. She's got like the original recipe, like, right? like, yeah. from, like 1975 or something. She probably sells it. <laughs> Maybe. Or no, she doesn't. She has a damn good union job. True. Yeah, she's getting papered up. Cause like before I left there, I was just getting under 20 bucks an hour. Right. Wow. So like, and she's been working there for well over five years, getting raises every year, right. Getting bonuses and whatnot. And she's promoted up to that position of union rep. She, she getting paid. She got way like after she buys her crack, she has money for extra shit. She can go, she can order Uber eats and watch something on Netflix and have some crack. And have some crack. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? I, I support that. So, <laughs> there you go. You came to wine cellar media to learn some things. <laughs> well, let me uh, take a look over here at the archive chat space and uh, 
uh, oh, uh, homie loco that has a uh, name change privacy is saying that sucks. Going back to Kyle Kalinsky, I thought he was one of the cool ones. <clears throat> Me too. Right? Yeah. Good on the populism. Yeah. Talks that populist shit real cold, you know. And that and this is the cold shit because I I've been following like these folks for uh, since about like 2011, 2012, around there. I got into like, cause Kyle Kalinske, I don't know if he still works under the Young Turks imprint, mm -hmm. but he came up under Chank Unger and the Young Turks, mm -hmm. but he had his own show and Chank mostly worked with like Anna and um, I think Ben Mankiewicz for the most part. Mm -hmm. And uh, but sometimes he would have Kyle on the panel. And when it came to social issues, Kyle was always to Chank's left, mm -hmm. right? Like if it was about transgender folks, black folks, stuff like that, Kyle was to Chank's left and the funny shit on the social shit and the partisan shit anna kasparian used to be to chink's right anna kasparian like about a decade ago was like a centrist democrat <laughs> and then she started getting more lefty to where she was to chink's left kyle kalinsky became more like chink and now anna kasparian is all the way over at fucking jacobin <laughs> Yeah. Right. While Chank is, he's just still that. Yeah. Yeah. Even more partisan y. And uh, going over here to uh, Zach Loco in the archive chat space saying conservatives don't even know what capitalism is. They, no, they fucking don't. don't. Yeah, like in, in the um, in the GM plant where uh, where I go down and do contract with Touchpoint Sanitation, <laughs> go there and do that contracting work. I always interact with the workers and I don't say socialism. I don't say, I don't even, I don't say the word populism. I don't say the word capitalism. Mm -hmm. I just chat with them, riff with them and critique capitalism while I do it. And they're just like, oh, that's right, man. We're all just going to have to work till we die. Mm -hmm. We're ain't none of us going to get no social security. They ain't going to let us have it. Yep. I might try to get it, but they're not going to let me have it. And that cat is probably still pro-capitalism because that's the word he's been taught to wed himself to. Yeah. Father muckers. A uh, little bit more about this book. Phoenix oh, leader okay. wants a little bit. Oh, what up? Oh, nothing. Phoenix oh. <laughs> <laughs> leader hates this book. She says the worst book she's ever seen. Um, so back to Bonnie Anderson, right? So she's um according to Bonnie Anderson, the um the lying racist that ran to be um a part of the school board. According to Anderson, the book depicts white children displaying microaggressions to children of color. She admits that the books do not come out and say, quote, we want white children to feel like oppressors, end quote. But that is what she feels the books do. And that's why I wanted them to ask that question about how does it push a critical race theory curriculum? Because at the end of the day, if all you can come back is, well, I just feel like it does. All right. Well, then also say, so have the white children told you this? Which white children? Oh, uh, you know what? You can't She'll just lie. You, you can't just say, oh, so lie, yeah. but make her lie and zoom the camera in. Zoom it in on her lying face so people can see her eyes <laughs> doing the side to side <laughs> dart back and forth. Right. Do that shit that Kevin Samuels producers do where they zoom in on the woman's face to make her look goofy while she's trying to answer his bullshit questions. Mm -hmm. That's tomorrow's episode, folks. Tomorrow's episode is about um, is what would you expect from dating a Kevin Samuels fan? All right. So get ready for that one. <clears throat> and so look at a little bit more of this article. Um, State Bill 3739 became law on September 1st and prohibits schools from presenting critical race theory material in social studies. Put it in science. I mean, it's not there anyway, but they only picked one subject. Yeah. Uh, so, and this is another quote from, um, from Bonnie. I almost want to say Bonnie the B word, but I'm better than that. Um, quote, Bonnie says, uh, this is very subversive because they aren't calling it critical race theory and it's not being presented in social studies. I, I now I now I'm like Phoenix Kaleeder. I should have just kept reading the article. <laughs> she was going to do <laughs> what I was saying. Um, so Bonnie Anderson created a petition that had 500 signatures before change.org removed it for violating their policies. Conservatives never follow rules ever. 
What, but what happened to free speech? For what happened to, oh, like the book? Yeah. She would probably argue that the school is not Congress and it's not violating their free speech. No, damn well, she's never read that amendment. She's never read that. None of them, have any of them ever read? The only person I knew, I didn't actually know her, but that I know of that was very into the Constitution, Nicole Sandler mm-hmm. out there in Florida. She actually had a pocket constitution yeah. that she literally kept in her pocket, apparently at all times, because yeah. she would have it in her pocket while broadcasting. And there was one episode, I think it may have been when um, Obama did something that uh, uh, like repealed habeas corpus. I don't know all those things, folks. My bad. I'm not very... Uh, uh knowledgeable on that but uh she pulled out her pocket constitution and ripped it up on air and this is the best part she had another one anyway of course she did so of course the lefty Mm -hmm. knows the constitution but conservatives never in everness know it um a little bit more um subheading many other parents are upset over cancellation So while those 500 parents are upset, many feel just the opposite. Um, This is a quote from um, from Angie Waller, who was also a parent at that school. That was a little like propaganda. All right. How? What? Where? While those 500 parents are what 500 parents? Ah, it does say parents and not just signatories. Right. Like, how do you even know their kids are in that fucking district? It could have been somebody in another state who signed that shit. The fuck you mean 500 parents? Conservatives always lie. Um, I know folks are not going to remember podcast episodes from a thousand episodes ago. But back at the beginning of this, I remember covering a story, covering a story. I think it was um, during the Obama Mitt Romney run. And um, a conservative got caught throwing um, literally garbage bag fulls of uh, of Democrat voting uh, uh, ballots mm-hmm. in a dumpster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they never follow rules. They always lie. They always act in bad faith. And we need motherfuckers to start acting like they do. Let's mention Kyle Kalinske again. One of his personal rules for himself as a broadcaster and political commentator is... He refuses to treat anyone as a bad faith actor. He takes everyone at face value, no matter what the blue fuck they are saying. Yeah, that's stupid. Stupid, but it's also it's also dangerous too. Honestly, dangerous for you, not for him. Not for him. Yeah, (laughs) for everybody else. But as I said, really intense theoretical debates about things that will never materially affect me. Woo! So while those 500 signatures are upset, many feel just the opposite. A quote from Angie Waller, parent at the school. I hope the school board will listen to all of the parents. I'm doing a great impression of the community and not just a few that are upset. End quote. Perfect impression of uh, Angie Waller. Um, according to uh, Kraft's website, the author, uh, The New Kid is a timely, honest novel about starting over at a new school where diversity is low and the struggle to fit in is real. I get how he played the algorithm on that. He got struggle and is real close enough to each other. Uh. Uh, yeah, <laughs> memeing it up. Uh, ending um, on this quote, the struggles um, the main character experiences still happen today, says Waller. It's important that all students are exposed to real life, even if they've never experienced it themselves. They should learn what their friends and other classmates have experienced. Now, I wish people would stop arguing that. Again, act in bad faith. Say, I just put out a book to show American students learning how to be more patriotic. And I did this because the Lord came to me and said this one night while I was in medit not I almost said meditative, mm-hmm. while I was in a state contemplative of contemplative prayer. Contemplative prayer. There you go. Act in bad faith. Lie to these motherfuckers. <laughs> Why are you still telling conservatives the truth? None of what they believe in is based in truth. Look at the Christopher Columbus posts. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> All right. Did you see Marjorie Taylor Greene said happy Columbus Day and misspelled his name? Oh, fuck, she did. Mm-hmm. 
bad faith actors. And it's funny because conservatives always start with kids. That's why anytime it's anything around kids, like they get so mad. Like with um, Lil Nas X, they were like, they're showing this around kids. And then this, it's around kids because they know it starts with kids that like they end up trying to make them into a conservative. Yeah, it's just like, oh, you're going to turn kids gay? Kid, why are you thinking about kids fucking? <laughs> That's weird. That's weird, bit. and you should be shot in your fucking face for thinking that. That's a little weird. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, switching over. This is why we um still come in heavy-handed with the trigger warnings. Um, coming off of insider.com. I sent this article to Phoenix co-leader. Uh, it's um article up by Bill Bostock, male warden of an all-female uh California prison, is accused of sexually abusing a woman held there and taking photos of her naked. Um, and this information comes from the DOJ, Department of Justice. <clears throat> I'll skip the bullet points and hop right to it. So the male warden of this all-female federal prison in California has been charged with sexually abusing a woman who was being held there. And uh, his name is Ray Letter J. Garcia. All right, Ray Letter J. Garcia. All right, because I know when you say Ray J, people are like, what the fuck are you talking about? Nah, Ray, his middle initial is J Garcia, and he's a 54-year-old individual and was working, working um, as an associate warden at the Federal Correctional Institute in the city of Dublin near San Francisco. Dublin in San Francisco. Stop letting them name everything. <laughs> And this was at the time of the allegations, the DOJ said. He was placed on administrative leave in July, the department said. Now the DOJ cited a complaint alleging that he digitally penetrated the victim on multiple occasions. The woman was not named. In one instance, the DOJ said that Ray J. Garcia is accused of first assaulting the woman and then moving her hand onto his genitals when she pushed his hand away. Mr. Garcia is also accused of taking photos of the woman naked and showing her photos of his penis on his phone. The Department of Justice said the complaint went on to accuse Mr. Garcia of trying to stop the woman from reporting him uh, by telling her that he couldn't be fired because he was close friends with the person tasked with investigating inmate allegations. As part of his prison duties, Mr. Garcia had led sexual assault training for the staff in 2019 and 2020. This is always going on in rape culture, isn't it? It is, but my whole thing is like, I am going to punch the next person I hear say, just reform the police, don't defund them. Reform them by what? Having more sexual assault trainings with the guy who's literally raping inmates? That guy? That guy? Yeah, I hate the whole, and like, you know, people think it's like, um, just like a snarky comment to be like, how can you reform this? And they don't want to answer because they pretend it's in bad faith or it's like a stupid question, but I'm dead fucking serious. When the guy who's running the sexual uh, harassment or sexual abuse training classes is a fucking rapist himself, how are you going to reform that system? How are you going to reform that prison, right? Same thing with what is it? Didn't we cover um, a town in Alaska where every cop on the force has been convicted of domestic violence? How are you going to reform that? <laughs> like, what the fuck? But yeah, that's why I hate this whole reform thing or just give them more education, like, or just uh, give them more training. Nah, this is the guy who was the trainer, right? Didn't the uh, Derek Chauvin, wasn't he a trainer too? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, well, also with that as well, um, uh, right, let's go back in time in the wine cellar to 2014. And this article is from May 1st, 2014, January, February, March, April, May. Yeah, no, at that point, Phoenix Kalita and I were a couple and and broadcasting together full time. That's right. Uh, Seven Black Uncle Billy was doing three hour broadcast with this here woman over the telephone across state lines. All right. It's like the man act of podcasting. Uh, fucking um, 2014. 
rape crisis center scolds a Texas judge after she sentences a rapist to work with victims there. Hey. Remember that story. I I'm remember. not gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna recover it, but like it um, it immediately made me think of uh think of that. Skip out, run it back, flippity flibble dap. Uh-oh, there we are. And getting toward the end of the article. <clears throat> Um, Mr. Garcia, who has been um, charged with one count of sexual abuse of a ward, made his first court appearance um, a past Wednesday and is due next in and is next due in court on November 12th. All right. And right now it's October 12th. So run it forward a month. Hopefully by November 12th, we will have plumbing <laughs> and I will have the doors sealed for winter. Uh, <clears throat> He faces a maximum sentence of 15 years in prison and a $250,000 fine if he is found guilty. Ooh, excuse me. So that's what's going on. I don't know if you have commentary. Oh, I'm just curious what the minimum sentencing is because that's the maximum. So is this one of those he could get convicted and do no time at all things? Ooh. Because all they said was maximum 15 years. That doesn't tell me like minimums. Yeah, and this is also <laughs> only one article. And I wish I would have had time to do my fucking five. Life is real. Uh, Ma'am, can you uh, pull open your Twitter? And I've got you on this. Uh, it's You should have the notification on, on a, yes, on a Texas boogaloo boy who admits in court that he traveled to Minneapolis after George Floyd died and fired 13 shots in a police precinct building to sow chaos. Yep. Which is wild because I remember black people said at the time that that was happening and nobody wanted to listen. Uh, so Ivan Harrison Hunter, that is a terrible name and yet so incredibly on point for the story. Ivan Harrison Hunter, 24, admitted he traveled from the San Antonio area to Minneapolis after Floyd's death and fired 13 shots from an AK-47 uh, into the Minneapolis Police Department's third precinct on May 28th, 2020. Protesters gathered outside of the building in the days after Floyd's May 25th death. On the night of May 28th, protesters threw rocks at the windows of the precinct and it was set ablaze. Footage taken that night shows Hunter in a skull mask giving someone a high five after firing the shots, yelling justice for Floyd. What? That hate. And that's how you knew it had to be some whack shit. Yeah, because that, that's how everyone was just yelling his last name around. Like we're in the barracks together. But also like, so you just fired randomly at a police building and said justice for, for like you did some shit, nigga. What? Come on now. I mean, these, these are Jimmy Dore's homeboys. Ugh. They're boogalooing. All right. Mm -hmm. They're pro BLM. They're boogalooing. They are not pro BLM. They did. One of them did call Alex Jones a bootlicker to his face. That was lovely. That is a thing that happened. And Jimmy Dore once spit in Alex Jones' face. That was also, oh man, it's such a wacky world out there. God, I need to have a run in with, with another content creator. I kind of, I kind of want to test Tariq Nasheed out. I want to see where it's, I, I want to see where his fade game is. I think one of the guys from the citations pod follows me. Oh, they're, they're, they're neat. I don't, I don't want a negative run in with one of them. They're cool. They're hip. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I also, I guess I critique a lot of things. I should say that I do like some things. Citations Needed is a podcast I like, but that's not the story right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so looters were thought to be inside the building at the time, and no one was injured by gunfire. Which also, so wait a second. So you fired the shots for justice for Floyd. Yeah. Uh, I want to, hold on, let me scroll back up and see now. <laughs> he traveled, do to do and fired okay into okay so i just want to read the way that this article is written okay because this is telling me something that they didn't mean to tell me i think the story behind the story right ah. so ivan ivan harrison hunter admitted he traveled from san antonio to minneapolis uh, and fired 13 shots from an ak-47 into the minneapolis police department's third precinct building right yes now a couple paragraphs later uh, they note looters were thought to be inside of the building at the time. So when he fired at the building, the looters were already. So there were civilians inside when he started shooting at the building. 
And you're trying to tell me that this, we thought that this guy was with the BLM people? Jimmy Dore said so. Okay. Boogaloo, Hawaiian shirts. Hawaiian shirts. So, all right. So apparently he yelled justice for Floyd and shot at a police precinct while there were people inside, which also they're not looters. They're just people. What the fuck did they steal from the paper clips? Right. Like, what the fuck did they steal from a police department? Post-it notes? Yeah, but paper clips, you can, you can use those to, to like pop a SIM card out of an iPhone. So uh-huh. that's, those Wait. are some pretty hardcore paper clips. In the police station, do they have those, um like where they put people's stuff like, marijuana and cocaine and like, uh, oh, wait, uh, evidence room yeah the evidence room i don't know that i don't think the protesters got into that oh okay that's yeah. probably heavily locked yeah yeah. Oh, yeah and then i don't even know if every precinct has one honestly i don't even know um all right so ivan a self-proclaimed member of the boogaloo boys a far-right anti-government extremist group i did that was not my commentary that was in the article but it's absolutely correct and i agree with it uh, members of the movement appeared at Black Lives Matter protests across the country in 2020, carrying weapons and wearing Hawaiian shirts with tactical tactical gear. Boogalooers believe a second, a second civil war known as the Boogaloo is imminent and will result in an overthrow of what they believe to be a corrupt political system. That doesn't sound cultish at all. Hmm. Uh, the Boogaloo boys are known to exploit tensions and sow chaos in pursuit of further violence. The term Boogaloo has been used in some cases uh, as an outright call for a race war, according to the SPLC. Federal agents identified Hunter as the shooter after spotting him wearing the same skull. Uh-oh. What's happening? Agents identified Hunter as the shooter after spotting him wearing the same skull mask in a Facebook photo and didn't know how to black block with the black block. Ah. Okay, it's called black block for a reason. They look the way they look for a reason. That's all I can say. Um, and they don't wear skull masks for a reason. Uh, after the protest, Hunter bragged on social media about his actions, saying he helped the community burn down the police station in Minneapolis. Will y'all niggas stop tweeting everything that you do? <sighs> then how will people know they did it? How would... Pe- lasagna yeah but you want to put motherfuckers want to be misogynistic and talk about a, a young woman just posting something for likes mm-hmm. and you are talking about well burning treason. shit down treason for likes yeah like i mean as fucked up as the government is and as much as we don't like it I, it is still technically treason <laughs> yeah i don't just run around shit. like committing felonies <laughs> like like it's already bad enough under capitalism. I don't want to be in the prison uh, sector of capitalism yeah, as fuck well. No, fuck no. Um, so Hunter is the third Boogaloo boy to be charged in connection with the Minneapolis protests. Oh, they snitched on each other. Uh, he communicated with other members of the group via, via Facebook after Floyd's death, writing that he was going to Minneapolis and was 72 hours out after a Minnesota-based uh, member posted that he needed a head count. An informant also, t- and did not just say they were snitching? An informant also told the FBI that Hunter admitted to shooting at the building and helping set it on fire. Uh, he was charged with participating in a riot uh, in October 2020 and faces a maximum of five years in prison. Mm. Wait, how many years did that kid face for breaking the, the windows on the cop car? Oh, Fuck. Wait a minute! This what this nigga shot a hole. That was a lot. Hold up. And now I want to know because that was that the Freddie Gray protest. I think maybe. <laughs> is this man? Um, is he white? Yeah. Most That's, of the. It's so funny when white people are like, "There's no such thing as white privilege," but you're literally bragging about like a crime online. Yep. Yeah. Most of the Boogaloo boys are white because their shit is that weird right wing conspiracy shit. Um, it says uh, Alan Bullock, uh, and th- this is from uh, MSNBC, right? Mm-hmm. You don't hear that a lot on here. Mm. Uh, May 1st, 2015 article. All right, so we're May 1st and again, mm-hmm. uh, but just a different year. Uh, teen faces higher bail than Baltimore cops accused of murder. Um, Alan Bullock is being held on a $500,000 bail while the officers are being held on a range of $250,000 to $350,000. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, 
uh, Bollock, he is a Baltimore teen arrested for smashing a police car window with a traffic cone amid the Freddie Gray protests. Uh, he's an 18 year old who voluntarily surrendered to the authorities at the um, urging of his parents. I remember that. They were like, we thought he was just going to get like a finer probation. I was like, seriously? You really thought that? Which, like, stop it. And, and I, I can't, for Black people raising kids, tell them real shit. All right. I tell my niece real shit all day because we work together. You want to talk about helicopter parenting, all right? Take your niece to work day, my niece daughter person, and can fucking tell her real shit. All right? Like I don't I don't get it. Like why do black parents want their kids less informed about white supremacy, about capitalism, about white sadism? Um I think that um I, I heard a theory that it uh, was like stemming from feelings of powerlessness hmm. they, because they know they can't actually stop white supremacy that they just, I don't know. But then it's like, you still want to warn somebody walking into it, even yeah. if you can't stop it. I don't know. God damn. Or do they not? I don't know. So don't wear your seatbelt then. You know other drivers out there are fucking up. Don't wear your seatbelt then. I think a lot I think a lot of them aren't informed themselves. Ugh. Or they're not admitting shit. Because if you're black, you experience racism. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of them, they, they lie to themselves and then they have offspring and then they don't tell that offspring the truth so that that offspring can now grow up not knowing the truth, wondering why racist shit is happening to them. Mm -hmm. No one's telling them real shit. And then they have kids and they're like, I don't know, uh, Martin Luther King ended racism. Mm. And then Nelson Mandela ended racism. And then Obama ended racism. <laughs> and then Michelle Obama ended racism. And then Kamala Devi Harris ended racism. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure another one is gonna end racism. Pretty, it's probably gonna be Kamala Devi again. Yeah, it's gonna be Kamala again. Yeah, they, they gotta run her in 2024. Oh, I, I imagine, in my head, it's gonna be like Kamala and Pete, and I'm just like so nauseous about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. And they just adopted those babies. Oh, the ones that she parades around like they're her kids? No. Um, Pete and oh, his husband, yeah. they got they adopted babies. Ah, he gets to pimp the image. Were they were they were they little colored kids? I think they were. Oh fuck yeah, that's good hustle, good hustle. He could do a bad job on their hair and everyone will say it's cute. Oh god. That's no. a fact based fact. Oh no. Imani Gandhi is gonna love it. And you know it. <laughs> <laughs> It's not funny. Uh, over, over at the archive chat space, uh, there's um, uh, name Privacy Loco and uh, Zach Loco. And Zach Loco is bringing me back to nuance, um, <clears throat> pointing out something here saying, um, uh, quote, I do appreciate the Young Turks being a thing. It's not a good place to stop your political journey. But when I was a teenager, I was solidly a centrist Democrat and occasionally catching uh, the Young Turks episodes helped point me in a more leftist direction. All right, so bringing me back to nuance, like, yes, yeah, it's, it's entry level. Yeah, it, it gets you in the game. Yeah, but yeah, definitely don't stop there. Don't stop there. And, and also, and it doesn't always have to be some media outlet. I recommend a lot of people read your local paper mm. if it still exists. Like one thing I'm starting to think is I don't think I can actually get the paper delivered to the house. Mm. Like I went to the website, couldn't find anything. I went to the store, bought a physical newspaper. There was no like flyer in it where you could fill it out. You know, you get a yeah. magazine and there's a little... Yeah. mail thing you can fill it out send your uh money order in and get your shit hmm. and i didn't see any of that for the local newspapers out here i think it's what the grand rapids free press yeah yeah i couldn't see anything to get the local paper here interesting yeah like a pay, pay, print media might be on the way out might yeah. be it's on the way out it's been on the way out yeah, yeah. so fucking but like check out your local paper like when i was a, a youngster reading my local paper that was how I could like put things together because in the local News Tribune paper that I would get in Tacoma, Washington State as a 13 year old, I would read, huh, Bill Clinton signed in this work for welfare thing, right? Then a couple uh, articles later, 
someone who um who now has to go do work for welfare has to get on one of those labor buses and get bussed out and now um she has to have her brother kind of babysit her son and get him ready for school while she gets bussed out mm -hmm. to go work for welfare and that uncle was irresponsible with placement of his gun and that black child got a hold of that gun took it to school played with it mm -hmm. and discharged the weapon and, uh, and and injured uh fatally another child in that school right and maybe that's why black parents don't talk about racism because a lot of people have problems connecting the dots the way you just did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Because it's so easy to look at racism as like an individual thing to tell your kids, oh, just stay away from like that one neighbor who's like a racist or an asshole, or, you know, maybe uh, I'll go to the school and talk to your one teacher who's being racist. But to think about racism in terms of systems like that, where like, this is how, like, these are the consequences of policy. This is the consequence of the government we have is a significantly a uh, harder thing to do, right? And that's why people are selling this whole, like, racism goes both ways. And it's like, no, it really does. not not when systemic power is involved, it doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I wonder if that might be part of the thing. And because, um, you know, I, white people have these blind spots with their kids, too. I mean, obviously different not about racism, but, you know, like white women talking to their daughters about rape culture have the same type of blind spots black parents have when talking to black children about racism. Like people really have a hard time with the systemic shit, either acknowledging how bad it is or connecting the dots in a concise way that makes sense. Like, oh, uh, here's one. And um, and yeah, yeah like, right. You let, let me know, like, hey, nigga, that's way off base. Don't say that shit. Right. Here we go. I'm the, off, off the top of my head here. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, uh, and I guess we're going to assume cis, mm -hmm. assume cis women raising assumed cis daughters. Mm -hmm. Right. And we're talking cisgender. Right. Genitals, brain assigned at birth. I'm not very good at articulating it. Just stop killing trans women. Uh, but assume cis women. Right. Um. <clears throat> raising assumed cis daughters and like uh you're telling them about the party and the whole don't put your drink down rule mm -hmm. and don't ever take a drink that someone hands you rule mm -hmm. what about this one right the mother all you know live in the same community together maybe the mothers know each other get together with the daughters and be like let's do this one all of you say that you're gonna go to the party and then don't and then just all the mothers and daughters have a slumber party together and then make posts on social media that we didn't go to the party because we don't know which one of you boys are the rapists. Nah. I mean, yeah, but no. Nah. Like, yeah, but that's also really dangerous because you're going to piss off the rapist and he'll, he'll find someone sooner or later. Ah. So yeah, that's like, yeah. So it's better to just kill them. Just kill the rapist. Fertilizer. So we need to just go back to my old ideas. Why am I trying to come up with new ideas? And raise your sons right. Like raise them better. Yeah. So, yeah. You can start with the root problem. Because you realize like this propaganda is only going to grow and eventually you're going to get Emperor William. Do you want to put in all that effort and spend all that money raising your son just so I can kill him? Is that what you want? You want me to fucking just murder all that effort you did? Cause I'll kill it. I'll kill it with my bare hands. I don't care. The human <laughs> body is very fragile. You it take really a is. rapist's head and just kind of bang it up against a solid surface. Once I, it gets uh, the temple, you're out. Yeah, not a lot, a lot to the temple, to, to the wall, <laughs> right? To the temple, to the wall. There's dead rapists in these halls. Oh, God. Now, women are safe in the street, street, street. All right. Fuck out of here. Hey. Fuck you guys. All hey, right. WineCellarMedia.com. Um, if you want to see rapists die, you can go to oh. PayPal. What Wait, are we done? Um, I didn't have, you have heat? Oh, you wanted to do the Twitter thing. Which one? The Black Conversation. Oh, shit. You did. I that was a new one we just added in. I didn't know you still have energy for it. Uh, can we take a brief intermission? I'll hit the bathroom and we can do it. Okay, Phoenix Kalita wants to uh, uh briefly intermentorize 
And so with that's, that, that's, that's not a word. Yes, it is. No, it's not. That it is a fact-based word. No, it's uh, not. But for those of you folks that are tuned in, um, we will go ahead and give you this uh, Tuesday's Green News Report. This is from Brad Friedman and Desi Doyen from the Bradblog.com. It's Tuesday, October 12, 2021. It must, it is required to include strong climate legislation. No climate, no deal. Democratic senators demand climate policies stay in Biden's Build Back Better Act. A quarter of all critical infrastructure in the U.S. is at risk of failure due to flooding. Mounting costs of extreme weather disasters in 2021 already surpass all of 2020, plus... Thank you, Mr. President for the profound action you are taking today to permanently protect the homelands of our ancestors. President Biden restores Bears Ears and two other national monuments. All of those stories and more straight ahead from bradblog.com. I'm Brad Friedman. And I'm Desi Doyan. Stand by for six minutes of independent green news, politics, analysis, and snarky comment. This state fires, droughts, and now we have an oil spill. It's right off the coast here. LA residents are furious. The last thing we want is oil in our sewage. <laughs> True that. This is your Green News Report. Okay, Desi Doyen, the cost of extreme weather in 2021 is continuing to mount, go figure. Oh yes, it is. Extreme weather disasters that are turbocharged by climate change are extremely expensive. New damage and loss estimates from Hurricane Ida last month in Louisiana and New York City now rank Ida as worse than Superstorm Sandy in 2013. Wow. That's according to NOAA. Overall, Hurricane Ida, which made landfall as a Category 4, then left a trail of deadly destruction from New Orleans to New York City, cost the U.S. nearly $65 billion dollars, making Ida the fifth costliest U.S. hurricane on record. And yet we see one event after another like this costing tens of billions of dollars each. And well, we just don't have enough money to take care of climate change in advance. Well, NOAA also reported that the first nine months of 2021 have already surpassed all of 2020 for total U.S. damage and losses from extreme weather disasters. In 2021, hurricanes, storms, western wildfires, and the deadly winter deep freeze in Texas so far have already cost the U.S. nearly $105 billion. That's $4 billion more than all of last year. Well, it's okay if you charge the taxpayers. Just don't charge the fossil fuel companies, please. Now, a new report finds that flooding is the most expensive natural disaster in the United States. The report finds that one quarter of all U.S. critical infrastructure, facilities like airports, hospitals, and police stations, are at high risk of being rendered inoperable due to flooding. That's according to a new first-of-its-kind National Inventory of Flood Risk from the nonprofit First Street Foundation. The researcher's report concludes that the U.S. is not ready for the climate of today, much less the extreme weather and climate events coming in the next few decades. The report specifically warns that as the climate continues to warm in the next 30 years, the flood risk will grow more dire. States most at risk are Louisiana, Kentucky, West Virginia, and Florida. Mm, buckle up. Congressional Democrats and environmental groups are pressuring the White House to not bargain away clean energy tax credits and other climate policies in Biden's Build Back Better reconciliation package Good. in order to get conservative Democratic senators Joe Manchin of West Virginia and Kirsten Sinema of Arizona to sign on. At a press conference late last week, Democratic senators Tina Smith of Minnesota and Ed Markey of Massachusetts called extending clean energy tax credits necessary for investment certain Certainty for the private sector and crucial for meeting Biden's goal of slashing U.S. greenhouse gas emissions in half by 2030. At the press conference, the Reverend Lennox Yearwood of the Hip Hop Caucus cited the many who have lost loved ones in this summer's fires and floods. It is not a game. It's about money. Put forth your loved one on the altar of the sacrifice of climate crisis. No climate, no deal. No climate, no deal. 
But some good news, internet behemoth Google has announced that it will demonetize content that denies the science of man-made climate change across its advertising platforms and YouTube starting next month. Nice. Not a moment too soon, Google. Google says it will prohibit all ads on content that contradicts, quote, well-established scientific consensus around the existence and causes of climate change. So they can run it but they just don't make money off of it. Right. Sounds good to me. Finally, President Biden on Friday restored full protections to three national monuments that had been slashed in size by former President Donald Trump in the largest rollback of public land protections in U.S. history. Biden restored commercial fishing restrictions to the Northeast Canyons and Seamounts Marine National Monuments off the coast of New England. And in Utah, in a huge victory for Native American tribes, Biden restored and expanded the boundaries of Bears Ears and Grand Staircase Escalante National Monuments, known for their stunning desert landscapes and Native American cultural and archaeological treasures, protecting the lands from permanent destruction by logging, mining, and fossil fuel interests. Thank you, President Biden. For much more on all of these stories and the ones we couldn't get to today, check out our website at greennews.bradblog.com. I'm Brad Friedman. And I'm Desi Doyan. And this has been your Green News Report. This land was made for you and me. This land is your land, and this land is my land. From California to the New York Island. <laughs> All right. Phoenix Kalita is back. Yes. Brad, and it's interesting that Brad Freeman and Desi Doyen covered that same story that um Kyle Kalinsky was acting like a doofus about. Mm-hmm. All right. So we are on the other side of this whole thing, and Phoenix Kalita would like to get into some willy-nilly nonsense that might get us locked in some quarantine camps. All right, but hopefully these chicks are in there doing TikTok dances. All right, because if they're not, I'm gonna be I'm pissed. However, I'm pissed. 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 Mm-hmm. Royally pissed. <laughs> All right. And that's a fact based fact. You knew that, didn't you, Miss Man? Uh, I think none of those actually fit the conversation. None of those? Oddly enough. Oh, I know why you said that. There's really not a nefarious plan. Y'all just tin full hat wearers. All right. Yes. Yes. About Jesus. I think they have forgotten the theology of redneckism in America. All right. <laughs> fucking said that on purpose. I'm here to tell you, there's a group of elitists that run this nation, a bunch of globalists that run the world, and their money runs it. And I'm going to tell you something. It is nothing more than a satanic death cult. That's fact-based truth. Anyways. Yes, ma'am. So we don't normally do sports stories, and this isn't really a sports story. It's more of a jumping off point. Hey. Yes. So we don't do sports stories. Correct. Don't make me explain hockey again. Oh, feel free. What, hockey? Mm-hmm. All right. Do you know anything about hockey? Well, so what you get in hockey is uh, you get two opposing teams, mm-hmm. and they strap on their knife boots and nice. slide around on the ice floor. And on the ice floor, they get the um, it ain't it ain't funny. <laughs> All right. They take um they take wickerless brooms, so they kind of just have the handle and they bend it a little bit, and then they get to they get to whacking around a checker piece, but they're not actually playing checkers, they just have the one piece and they kind of share it back and forth. And then they have um they have grounded basketball hoops that they closed off and then they try to try to broom and sweep the checker piece into it but if that's getting boring start a fight that's hockey see i'm a sports guy (sighs) see no we don't do sports stories on the show and now you know why (laughs) i'm a sports guy dear listener um but this is really just a jumping off point but i just want to do a little bit of context as far as what we're talking about, so um, this is about John Gruden, who was a prominent uh, broadcaster on ESPN, who did color commentary during Monday Night Football. Uh, he later became the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. Did you even know the Vig- the Raiders went to Vegas? What the fuck? What does no? Well, just just disband the team. What the fuck city are them niggas in? Right? Because like, what? 
what by the time this this baby was born like how many cities were they in at that point were the oakland raiders los angeles raiders at probably los angeles because oakland was before that oh oakland it? was first i thought oakland was first what is the oh i don't even know <laughs> but anyway it's like vegas now but uh the point is that gruden who was the head coach of the las vegas raiders a color a color commentator on espn basically got caught up sending out bad bad emails um so he is now out of a job and his departure from monday night football has since been reported uh, the story, which landed last Friday via the Wall Street Journal's Andrew Beaton, headlined, John Gruden used racial trope to describe NF NFLPA Chief uh, Du Maurice Smith in 2011 email. <clears throat> Several days later, the scoop is still one of the most popular stories on the website, signifying the widespread interest in subject matter. Beaton explained on Friday that an NFL investigation into a uh, quote-unquote workplace misconduct at the Washington football team unearthed more than 650,000 emails that raised issues beyond uh, the scope of the investigation. But one of the issues were Gruden's messages to the Washington team's then president. Uh, Gruden was casually and frequently uh, misogynistic and homophobic over several years and used terms to denigrate people around the game and to mock some of the league's most momentous changes, according to Ken Belson. So that is the context. This guy got fired. Uh, he's now whining and apologizing and saying that uh, I didn't mean to hurt anyone. Like, I can't find the actual email, but it sounds like he was just straight up calling people like race, racial slurs and shit. Oh, I heard. And I like before we start recording, like while doing show prep, I heard Phoenix Khalid frustratedly yelling at the phone that she just wanted to find the damn email. I knew she thought it was like a fucking like a, you know. Yeah, because that's how lefties are. We actually want to know what's in the emails. Mm hmm. Um, but so he has since apologized and said he didn't mean to hurt anyone. I don't know how that's possible, but whatever. So that is what happened. Why are we talking about it? Because. <laughs> Want the Raiders history in between that. Oh yeah. If you've got it. Uh, in 1960, they started in Oakland and then they went to Los Angeles and then they went back to Oakland and now it's Las Vegas. Okay. There you go. Um, and back to us. That's, that's wild. Um, but so here is why we're talking about it. So Tony Dungy, right? That is how he says his name, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, let me uh, see. I think I may. Uh, oh, my bad. Uh, it's the archive chat space. Zach Local said, uh, didn't you say you were done playing clips from that guy four minutes ago? Uh, which guy? <laughs> oh, fucking Greg Locke. Oh, Greg Locke? Because you probably played it and said, we're not going to do that again. And then you went ahead and did it again. <laughs> <laughs> this is the facts. The facts, Jax. <laughs> I, I, he has almost a whole page of the soundboard. <laughs> um. So anyways, so now Tony Dungy, uh, who used to fucking uh, be a coach in the NFL, right? Um, he, for some reason, got called into comment about this. And he, his commentary was, uh, I did not defend the emails, uh, the email from John Gruden. I said it was inappropriate, immature, and attack on a man's character. I did not attribute it all to racism and said a single incident 10 years ago, uh, we should accept his apology and move on. So that was the first email. That was Tony's response. Yeah. Since then, there's been dozens more emails. It wasn't just a one-time slip up, yeah. obviously. Now, Tony Dungy says more emails have come, more inappropriate, immature, wrongful attacks on people. I don't defend those either. And given the apparent pattern of behavior, uh, the Raiders did the right thing in terminating John Gruden. Now, keep in mind, Tony Dungy yet has not has yet to say anything about the homophobia, racism or misogyny, because that's why he got fired. These emails were racist, homophobic and misogynist. And then Tony Dungy's last tweet about it. That being said, if Gruden shows true remorse and more importantly changes his actions, I would forgive him. As Christians, huh? that's what the Bible commands us to do because that's what God does for us. I know it's not popular, but it's biblical. And then he put in a little uh, screen cap of a Bible verse. It says, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive your sins. Yeah. 
And this is why I had to lay down that little context because this is what the conversation is actually about. Fucking this weirdo ass Christian shit got black people fucked up. You have to forgive this man for being racist because you'll go to hell if you don't. Because that's what he's saying. Because if God doesn't forgive you, you go to hell. That that's how the book works. But they're Those not are the allowed rules. to say they're God. But we're so stupid. Like, how are you gonna act like something that doesn't exist and then force people to forgive you? What? Yes. And I, so also, but I also want to point out too that. Um, if you've been uh, deemed to be a sinner, right? And that could be in any sort of context. It could be like a legal context, right? Like I got caught stealing something, that's a sin. I deserve punishment. Uh, it could be a moral sin, right? I get pregnant outside of marriage. I'm a sinner, you know, that sort of thing. But they'll torture people for years for that shit. But we just have to forgive this guy because if he says he's sorry, we have to. Is that what we're doing? That is... Um... I'm getting real tired of calling folks coons. <laughs> I shouldn't have to like coons and bootlickers. Yeah, I'm tired of it. And then, um, because it's Twitter, I uh, the first thing I did was go to the quote tweets. Yeah, all the white people. I love Tony Dungy. <laughs> black people. This is a black person. Black people stay trying to forgive white people for fucked up shit all the time. Yeah, <laughs> fuck forgiveness, yo. Like, yeah, I, I, I'll, I will if I. Yeah, I'm never going to make the big news, right? Like, say, like, that Botham Jean shit where they're like, oh, we forgive her. Like, they, like, let some shit happen where, like, it's the police and me or something. Mm -hmm. And the reporter asks, do you forgive? You're like, no. no. And I'd like to say something else. <laughs> Any Black person that does forgive isn't Black anymore. Oh, God. <laughs> All right? You're not one of us. You're a dark-skinned white person. Yeah. Fuck off. No more forgiving. Yeah, another white person. Love this tweet. It captures the heart of the God I know. But ask these niggas about Michael Vick, though. We have to forgive people. But I just I just want to know what you think about Michael Vick. Colin Kaepernick, maybe. Mm -hmm. I just I just want I just want questions. Right, Colin Kaepernick. While well, you got some niggas saying light skinned black people ain't black, then how come they're calling him nigger? Like they're questions. not even and you know that racists tend to also be anti-Semitic. They're not even calling him Jew boy, mm -hmm. which is another part of his ancestry. They're focused on the niggeration of it all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's that one drop rule. Yeah, his afro was more important than his nose. Because mm. his nose was the other ethnicity, <laughs> if you will. If that's an ethnicity, right? I don't know. A wee, a wee bit. Right? Say the yeah. word. Ashkenazi. Ashkenazi. No one ever says Ashkosh Pagashkenazi. No one ever says that. And it's great. Ashkosh Pagashkenazi? Because of the jeans. Remember the jeans? Yes, I Ashkosh Pagash. Say Ashkis. That? What's Ashkis. that? That's oh, that's what you call the pants? No, Ashkenazi. Sure, Ashki. Oh, it sounds like you're just speaking a different language right now. Like, Ashkenazi? Well, <laughs> well, to be fair, Ashkenazi is a Hebrew word. <laughs> oh, oh word. Yeah. so you are speaking another language. <laughs> oh. um, let's see, where are these code tweets? Someone said, this is the demographic that gave us Biden in the primaries. Boom. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, someone else said, no, the problem with this is that you don't come to defense of Black players and coaches like this. Um, but you had a problem with Michael Vick drinking goose as a grown ass man. Uh, Christian brainwashing never take a day off. Yeah, like Seriously. people are not like feeling this in the comments. Um, yeah, and it's all the white people like live, laugh, love. This is so important. This is so special. But what are the um and oh Uncle Tom, coon, 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 a tap dancing raccoon. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like that gift. I've used it before. Uh, this is what I would expect from someone from his age group. <laughs> How old is he? Uh, he's gotta be probably in his sixties. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but one of the more interesting quotes from here, uh, and I can't read it because it's like That's super. Story. Yes, uh, and I can't read it because it's like super homophobic and transphobic. So I, you know, I'm not even gonna read it. But um, their point, which was something that I had mentioned, is that. Um, they were actually uh, like angry at black people for being coons, but using like homophobia and transphobia to get there because they were saying like, y'all want to talk about black people aren't getting anywhere or we aren't getting ahead. But in like the LGTB community is, that's not the words they used, <laughs> but, um, 
but like you want to know why they get ahead because they don't do shit like this and that was something that was interesting to me um in terms of like where the argument is about getting rights and moving forward i don't know did you have thoughts on that um i think yeah like in, in in general yeah like the um we need to be uh sorry or anything it's like no like the gate like look at what people complain about at pride because there may be someone who's actually like nude i guess at some of these events i've actually never been to a pride i don't know if that's just a lie or a stereotype i've never seen somebody nude i've seen people well, in like thongs and stuff yeah. okay but not like you know hold on well in florida they get wild i've seen some crazy stuff but i like it i don't mind it's also that's florida too that's they're yeah. doing, that, they're doing I mean, that anyway they're already <laughs> taking their pants See, off but my thing with pride though is like who cares pride is not a children's event exactly nope. like you're like it I, I mean i don't know that to me like to i yeah God, i hate to compare pride to shit like fourth of july or veterans day but like that would be like going to a veterans day event with like an antifa shirt why would you do, yeah. like like if you're about antifa why are you like doing mm-hmm. this bootlicker shit because remember st- this was about stonewall this was like fighting for trans rights and gay rights and sex worker rights and black liberation all that shit like they were these niggas was throwing bricks and fighting cops like why would you think that this is going to be like a Disney themed like fucking event? I know the corporations are in on it, but this is not like a Disney event. Like. But then that part where you said the no, <laughs> I know the corporation, that's the problem. And maybe folks like when your shit is underground, it's like people want nothing more than for everybody to hear their underground shit. Yeah. Like check out this under, it's good. You're going to dig it. If you know about it, you're going to support it. At least it, it may not be your favorite shit, but it's good. Right. But you got once the corporations get in, they're mm-hmm. going to fuck it up. Like for me, I'm a horror core head. Some folks may not know this about me and I should say what horror core is like rap music. That is, essentially deliberately very dark and horrific it's like horror movies that's why it's called horror core right but let me see let me see like a netflix special or like a new netflix series of the horror core homeboys Mm -hmm. a hip-hop series i'm writing a lengthy think piece on why this should not exist yeah because no keep my underground shit underground even the most mainstream artists that do horror core that should be deep in the album it's not the single you know and um and i think that folks should see that like because i'm pretty sure in the 90s and the 80s and whatnot like cis gay folks were like we want more people to know about this pride thing we're doing more involvement more Mm -hmm. support but when you see macy's supporting it right right and now they're like here let's get you a police escort for your float basically if the police are on your side it's not good yep Maybe that should should be a rule of thumb, as they call I mean, it. it. I thought it was a rule of thumb. I didn't know that we had gone back in time on that shit. Yeah, uh, honestly, but yeah, that was just something that was interesting to me. And of course, now I can't find like some of the, um, the funny quotes. Yeah, the fun stuff. But yeah, it was interesting because there were people literally having like black folk, like obviously conservative-minded black folks, having a whole conversation about LGBT people and like just acknowledging that. Um, are saying that like this wouldn't happen um to them because they wouldn't be coming out apologizing and like bending and scraping and that is something that's interesting to me yeah, i remember when i was uh, 16 working at the fair and like um like i saw like for the first time like somebody that i think you would use the language out and proud mm-hmm. this was in 1999 and it's and it's only because um they had like pins and buttons on their backpack Mm -hmm. and one of the pins was a rainbow and the other one said uh closets are for clothes and i was like oh this nigga's whore you know and it's like oh that that's out and proud that nigga walking around the puyallup fair where they will let you fight yeah that's the thing like niggas want to talk about dave Chappelle is brave no that motherfucker wearing a rainbow pin and a closets for clothes pin at the puyallup fair pre 9 11 that's brave Mm -hmm. because let me tell you how a fight goes at the puyallup fair the police and i say this non-jokingly not half jokingly non-jokingly are in their cars asleep or jerking off. I say that Mm. non-jokingly by actual news reports, all right? That's where the police are. Mm -hmm. So if you get into a fight at the fair, 
it's going to end <laughs> with a winner or a loser before police get anywhere near you. And then also, this is what the police are going to do. They're going to take the winner of the fight and remove them from the fairgrounds and then go back to their cars. Mm -hmm. They're not going to take you to the station, mm -hmm. right? So like fairgrounds on Puyallup Fair pre 9-11 was free reign for beaten ass. And this is a 1999 cat with a rainbow pin and a closet surfer clothes pin. But you're telling me that Dave Chappelle is brave for making $20 million six times in a row to tell the same joke. Yes, because freedom of speech. I don't think that's the same thing. And I also <laughs> don't think that Netflix is Congress and controls freedom of speech. And I'm also, finally, I'm not going to watch the latest season of Dear White People, not even to critique it. That show is too bad, and there aren't enough trigger warnings for how tacky that shit is for me to watch it. <laughs> yeah. What did you find? Oh, I found one of the comments about LGBT people. It said, meanwhile, I haven't seen any prominent members, me prominent members of the LGBTQ community shamelessly caping like this. So if you wonder why racism won't be a deal-breaking scandal. I don't know, people. I keep seeing this argument, and it's interesting to me. I don't know. Wait, the, can you break down the argument to me? So, like, what they're saying is, like, obviously they're being homophobic, so they're on the wrong side of history on that. But they're saying that, like, uh, because this guy that got fired, he wrote racist emails and homophobic emails, and Black people are already saying, we have to forgive him because Jesus. And they're like, but gay people won't forgive him, and he'll get canceled for messing with gay people. Because there's this, like, conspiracy that... Um, gay people have all this like power. <laughs> in oh, America I see somehow. that. They, they are, and so yeah. they're like, oh, like gay people canceled the baby and gay people canceled this. And if you say anything bad about Caitlyn Jenner, you're going to get arrested or whatever the fuck they be saying. Mm -hmm. But it's really interesting to me that um, they have all this like fear and hatred and bigotry against like queer people and trans people. But at the same time, they're complimenting them for being really good activists. And it's weird. <laughs> It's like, but then I also do wonder, is that something that does hold black folks back is that we just do have too many coons? Because honestly, I like now that I'm really thinking about it, like when someone does come out is, you know, gets um, like outed for being like super homophobic or super transphobic. It's I don't see like what the Dave Chappelle shit right now. Like I haven't seen a bunch of trans people defending him. Certainly not trans people with like numbers. Yeah. So it's like, so is there like a different mindset there that like, we're just not gonna uh, like be the first to apologize? I don't know. Eh, fucking, um, shit. Where, where was my thought, right? Uh, you were saying, um, Dave Chappelle. Oh, no, no. My, my thought farted smooth out of my brain <laughs> right out of there. It is gone. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was interesting. Like, I hate the way they're framing it because they're framing it from a homophobic, a homophobic perspective. But that is interesting to me because like, yeah, what if like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what if, oh, you have it? Yes, but oh, you, were, you were related. No, something. go ahead. Oh, you want me to lose it again? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, because I think um, it's not like there's too many coons and then add on to that. It's, it, yeah, frankly, Black people, it's never, it's never going to get good. Because it, it, with the coon thing and like corralling the coons and getting them in order, segregating them from us, ostracizing the living shit out of them, it isn't going to happen because there's too many types of coon, mm. right? It's not just the Republican or the Democoon. There's the capitalist coon. There's the fucking, when, when, when we were in um in Illinois, that, that nigga that worked at the bank as a security guard, oh, yeah. fucking coon ass niggas like that, mm -hmm. right? The Christian coon. Mm -hmm. There's so many different levels of coon or the person that decides to become a coon because now they're practicing miscegenation and they don't want to offend their white partner right right like the, right converted coons yeah like it's just there's too many different areas levels and wavelengths of coon and it ain't gonna happen i don't know it just ain't gonna goddamn happen and i think on some level being black and conservative like i would say that niggas like Tariq nasheed are fucking coons mm -hmm. right because that transphobic shit 
Nigga, that's white people shit. Homophobic shit, white people shit. That pro-capitalism shit, white people shit. Mm -hmm. The type of huckster that he is, he basically just acts like a white man. He is a snake oil salesman, just like the white man that you might see in like a 1960s informative cartoon on how to avoid a snake oil salesman. <laughs> it's just yeah, so many different is. sectors of types of coon and it's fucking useless. Get with your comrades and form mutual aid communes. Yeah. That's all you got. Yeah, oh, mutual aid is definitely all you got. But yeah, but no, because now I've been thinking about it since I heard it and I really can't, like, I can't... Um, you know, obviously this is an NFL story. So Tony Dungy's name is very prominent in it because he was an NFL coach, right? But like, even, you know, when white celebrities, you know, there's always a black celebrity. There's always a Michelle Obama to give you a hug, right? There's yeah. a fucking, right? You have an Amani Gandhi to defend you. You have all that shit. But like, I honestly, like really thinking about it, I can't think of a time that someone came out as saying something super homophobic or transphobic. And there were like trans people or gay people or queer people who have hundreds of thousands of followers lined up to defend them. Like, I really can't. Like, no. and it's, it, the more, it, but the more I think about it, the more it blows my mind. Cause there's so much, um, as you were just saying, like all these different types of coons, there's all these different types of people in the LGBTQ movement because there are those fucking white people who are like no fat people, no black people, no Asian, you know what I mean? Like we have racists there. We have uh, the people who thinks it's good to have cops at Pride. But I'm still not seeing niggas tripping over themselves to defend Dave Chappelle. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, like, I don't know how we get there where even though, like, we have our own internal disagreements and hate each other and there's, like, all this shit to work out, can we at least not, like be the first one to acquiesce to whiteness yeah. shit it's like fucking and it's like it's it's an unadmitted unadmitted that's a word sure it's a it's a refusal to admit a nihilism and a fake smile behind black people that just makes them want to live vicariously through black celebrities hmm. right so like they gotta jump up and scream no that that's my dave Chappelle. that's my bill cosby that's my r kelly that they got to live through these fucking uh, black celebrities because you know that the police will murder the shit out of you. Yeah. They'll probably bother Dave. Right. Right. But you're not Dave. 90 seconds. Really? Have I been on that long? Oh, shit. Blog Talk Radio is trying to end the episode. I mean, it is almost seven. It's 6.58. All right. Yeah, I guess that is um a two hour <laughs> program. <laughs> I, and that is kind of a long time to be on for a free episode. Yeah, because yeah, this one is not paywalled, obviously, at all. Yes. All right. Um, I don't know. I don't really have much more to add than that. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I guess they're on code, family, aren't they? I guess, but it's, it's a weird code. Seconds. Yeah, 60 seconds. Thank you, Blog Talk Radio. <laughs> okay, um, so I guess I'll dance back on over to the archive chat space. Skip, bop, the flip, bop, the deeble, double, reble, rop. And oh no, all right, uh, nothing fresh there. All right, folks. Um, so uh, got about a uh, a three thousand plus dollar plumbing bill coming our way. Uh, the uh, the tip jar is open for the podcast. It's uh, <laughs> PayPal.me slash Phoenix and William. The Patreon is patreon.com slash wine cellar media fund. Uh, we have a heavy plumbing bill coming our way. But at the same time, I'm going to keep on uh, doing show prep and cranking out these episodes. Um, uh, uh, name privacy individual Ten said, seconds. as usual, a great episode. Thank you, Blog Talk Radio. 10 seconds. Will you just go away? Blog Talk Radio, I'll upload to you later. Five, four. Three, <laughs> right? Two, it should do that one. soon, <laughs> shouldn't it? Oh, there it is. It's at zero. Okay, and it uh oh, that's right. It goes blog talk radio goes into overtime. Oh, yeah. Right. Remember when uh it go and and we we'd have yes. to be like anyone who's still on the phone line. If you hang up, it won't let you call back. <laughs> oh, <wow>. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> once you get into the third hour. And so, yeah, that's um, that's what's going on, folks. I will yes. still um do that. I have changed a bit of like my stop honking your horn out there. <laughs> um, I've changed a bit of my lifestyle to try to fit that. So like now when Phoenix and I are trying to have our oh, we're being an old couple hanging out watching TV time. I'm kind of watching TV, but now I bring the, the the podcast laptop up there and just start doing show prep while 
um, you know, interacting with and hanging out with Phoenix. And I, I'm going to do the same thing. Like if we're downstairs and we're having one of those days where we're like barbecuing or something out back, don't be surprised you see me in a chair. I'll be present interacting with the household, but I'm going to have that laptop on me doing more show prep and getting ready to crank these episodes out. Mm -hmm. Like I've got to crank these out and, um, and incentivize folks to say, hey, I would like to financially support these folks, especially so that William can stop shoveling shit out of the basement, literally. Yes. It's a tough life. Oh, God. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Phoenix just saw something you want to close out with. No, I'm not going to close out with it. She does not want to close out with that. Just so everyone knows, Phoenix Leader cracked her phone screen. I did crack my phone screen. Right after I fixed mine. For the first time in like... in 20 years 21 years wait there weren't no smartphones in 2000 i had a phone though damn you could crack them screens too yeah god damn yeah. capitalism don't make a, shit good yeah because i cracked one um when i was working as a waitress because it fell out of my apron pocket when i was working and it oh. hit the yeah it hit the sidebar i'm guessing your pants did not have utilitarian pockets a seven black. What's it like wearing pants with utilitarian pockets? It's nice. Yeah, seven black wears Wrangler rigs to work. And what I liked was that there's an indigenous woman that uh, that works there. I think mostly uh, indigenous blooded, and uh, was like ready to up and congratulate her on uh, joining the uh, the pockets club. Yeah, and uh, and even there was also a, um, a black man at the job, and I just call him Compton because of a joke we shared with each other mm -hmm. about work clothes. And he was also like, "Yep, I got my daughter's all pants with pockets too." <laughs> right, the way to go. Get your daughter's pants with pockets now. Like even when there's like people like to get kids like little just whatever the fuck pants. Mm -hmm. No, no, get your little girl's jeans with pockets and get them used to using pockets. Because one thing I also noticed with Seven Black, she'll literally forget to use her pockets. Mm, and she'll yeah. just be whole, like doing that thing where, where women and girls have lobster hands, yeah. where they've learned to just hold everything mm. and try to just pile it up like a fucking barbecue plate in Southern California. And fucking, you got refried beans on top of macaroni over half a steak and a rib falling off the side. And the paper plate is like falling because it's so heavy. Uh, yeah, well, that that's because fucking raggedy ass Uncle James brought the fucking cheap <laughs> plates. And that's why Killmonger said, Killmonger said, I'll kill you too, Uncle James. Oh, wow. We really should watch Black Panther so you can see how loud I laugh at that line still. I cannot help I it. I love it. when that, that fight scene when Killmonger says, you could die too, Uncle James. Oh. <laughs> that fucking line. Well, what's that nigga's name? Michael B. Jordan? Michael B. Jordan. Yeah. He's a nice young man, and he'll kill Uncle James. That ain't no problem. All right, folks. Uh, we're going to get the funk out of here. Uh, Facebook, uh, stop live stream, but then also stop recording. Stop it now.